Hello, I'm State Senator Susan Moran, and on today's episode of In Your Corner, we've got two amazing guests to discuss the work I've been doing in the State House as Chair of the Joint Committee on Consumer Protection and Professional Licensure. How the committee process works and how you can advocate for legislative priorities. I want to start by letting people know that the legislature convenes in two sessions. In January of the first year, bills are filed and then assigned to their respective committees based on subject matter. We have 33 joint committees with 17 members of the legislature on each committee, six senators and 11 representatives. Last year, the first of the two-year cycle, the 192nd legislative session, there were over 5,000 bills filed in the House and in the Senate. In addition to being Chair of Consumer Protection and Public Licensure, I am Vice Chair of the Joint Committee on Public Health, the Joint Committee on Advanced Information, Technology, the Internet, and Cybersecurity, and I'm also a member of the Joint Committee on Cannabis Policy, the Joint Committee on Financial Services, the Joint Committee on Municipalities and Regional Government, the Joint Committee on Tourism, Arts and Cultural Development, the Joint Committee on Transportation. So please stay with me as we get right into today's discussion here on In Your Corner. We're joined today by my friend, Representative Tacky Chan. He is also my co-chair on the Joint Committee of Consumer Protection and Professional Licensure, as well as later on, Amy Naples, the Executive Director of the Plymouth Chamber of Commerce. To start our first segment, welcome Representative Chan. Thanks so much for being here today to give folks at home a window into the State House. As you know, whenever a bill gets filed, it gets assigned to a committee. The Joint Committee on Consumer Protection and Professional Licensure is assigned bills by the House and Senate Clerk on all matters concerning credit, consumer protection, the issuance of licenses for the sale of alcohol beverages, the registration of various trades and professions. Each bill is publicly heard, allowing the public to weigh in with their opinion. We deliberate and sometimes redraft bills based on testimony before voting on whether to move the bill forward in the legislative process. We had this session over 300 bills to review in just the CPPL Joint Committee. Can you please tell our viewers what kind of topics we get in CPPL and the positive policy impacts the committee has worked on? Well, thank you for having me on, Senator, and hello from the uh, northern section of the South Shore, I suppose is the way to put it. And it's been wonderful working with you for the past session, uh, well, the session's not over yet, but for the past half session uh, on this committee that has a large number of complicated topics which includes uh, the entire alcohol industry from manufacture to retail, uh, dealing with the state lottery, the state's a single racetrack, as well as the uh, some odd 30 plus boards of registration within the Division of Professional Licensure, well, which is now called Division of Occupational Licensing, and some of the boards of Allied Health, the Executive Office of Consumer Affairs, uh, dealing with the Attorney General's Office of Consumer Advocacy and Consumer Affairs, um, working with a number of different stakeholders on general 93A, chapter 93 consumer law issues, uh, issues regarding data privacy of consumers, uh, regarding access of information from manufacturers such as car manufacturers as well as computer manufacturers, and uh, some of the interesting issues regarding licensing of intellectual property also passes through this committee. So uh, I'm very grateful to have uh, Senator Moran as my co-chair on a 
very large breadth of topics, as I like to refer to as kind of the catch-all of the legislature, that if it doesn't go to your committee, it's definitely going to mine. <laughs> that's, that's really well put. And I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your generosity. Um, it's really been work, great to uh, work with someone with the depth of expertise on these issues. Uh, can you remind me uh, and tell me a little bit about um, how long you've been working with CPPL and some of the changes, things you've learned? Sure, I'm becoming the old man in this gig is the, the way I'm starting a few of these days. Uh, I actually was the staff researcher for this committee for about 11 and a half or so years. Then uh, when I came back to the state house as a state representative, I did six years as a committee member. And now on my, uh, actually my fifth year, starting this year, it's really my fifth year as a chair of the committee. So all said and told, uh, I've worked on the subject matter for well into 23 plus years of my life. That, that's incredibly impressive in terms of depth of knowledge. You don't always find that on a joint committee. Uh, this year, this session, we, we did a lot for the joint rule 10 deadline, which we've just gotten past. Um, that's when the committee is supposed to make decisions on most, if not all of its bills. For shorthand, we call it reporting out bills, as you know. In some cases, we chose to extend the bill so we can have more time to consider it. And that's what we did on outdoor dining reform. So we can think hard about streamlining licensing and the approval process, clarifying alcohol licensing law, and uh, obtain some ongoing public input. With such a range of bills before us, can you tell folks what we've done so far that makes you most proud? We've done some very interesting things this past session, but most importantly, we've been spending the time listening to other folks about what's happening with them. So whether it be your restaurants on the local level or talking to spirits and beer manufacturers or talking to the hotel industry or the tourism industry, you know, one of the most important parts of this job is actually getting input from a large number of stakeholders that are very relevant to our economy. And hospitality is our second biggest economic driver in Massachusetts, along with healthcare and education. And COVID has definitely devastated all three sectors in very different ways. But you know, out of COVID, we had a chance to look at some very important issues, including things like fair housing initiatives and whether or not people were being gouged uh, as we move in this high inflation period. Looking at gym memberships, uh, some of you remember the Boston Sports Club issue last year where they were basically still taking your money when they weren't you know, giving you anything back. And it was definitely time to look at our, our gym membership laws regarding disclosure and how to uh, cancel and deal with refunds down the road. You know, we've worked on a number of, you know, interesting issues that doesn't sound that important, but it makes a lot of difference to everyone's lives on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, I, I agree with you. That's one of the things I'm most proud of is really um, having input on concerns that everyone runs across uh, in one way or another. Uh, home improvement um, issues that, that we've been working on lately, for example. So I, you know, I really appreciate that level of being able to directly impact people's lives. And, you know, as, as the house chair of the committee and, and your, with your multiple years of public service, can you sort of um, wrap up with um, some suggestions about the best way people can advocate? I know that, you know, with your um, leadership, um, we have gone not only, as you mentioned, delving into um, the advocates the, for the professionals in terms of what's important to the restaurant and hotel and other industries, but we've also had sort of town meeting forums and gone from Plymouth to uh, towards Central and, and Western Mass and, and looked at uh, sort of town meeting style conversations with folks. So what, what, what is the, um, in your view, what's the best way people can advocate? I always tell people the best way to advocate is very simple. One is definitely reach out to your local legislator or reach out to your state representative, your state senator, and convey your concerns to them because uh, they are able to also reach us as well uh, when we're actually more in person, hopefully we'll be more in person soon, the ability to uh, get us in the hallways, I like to put it, to mention an important topic, or from the constituency is a great way of conveying information. And of course, to submit testimony to the committee itself, whether it be this committee or any other committee in the legislature, 
in honestly a very personal, uh, professional and succinct manner. Uh, we do love to hear uh, people's individual experiences, tell your own story as they put it. But also at the same time, be mindful of the folks you're talking to doesn't necessarily have in-depth knowledge naturally about what you're discussing. So, you know, always write to the audience, as I like to put it, you know, speak to the audience uh, when you're meeting them and just advocating for an issue. So, you know, definitely on two levels. Let, you know, let the people who uh, you vote for at home know, and if you vote for either myself or the senator, it's a whole lot easier as before the committee, uh, but also be mindful of the fact your audience doesn't always know what you're talking about. Uh, there's always, I was, my life has always been dealing with folks that keep talking to me like, I just know what they're saying. And I, I think that's a strong um, presumption people shouldn't have. And that, uh, you know, be, be very aware of how you convey the information that we can easily digest and understand and, and, and also provide information how we can follow up with you if uh, myself or your local elected official wants to follow up with a conversation. Don't forget your contact information, best way to be reached. A very fundamental thing I'm discovering that people are forgetting to do these days in the world of email and text boxes. Right. You know, that, that's a good point, just the, uh, the mechanics of it. And the State House uh, website does have great instructions. Our staff um, has been just incredible in really um, engaging the public and, and helping people through their testimony. So um, thanks for that. I'm going to um, continue to uh, appreciate working with you going forward. And I want to just thank you for being on this segment. Uh, that's all the time that we have. Thank you, Representative Chan, for joining us. And up next, we're going to have Amy Naples, the Executive Director of the Plymouth Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. Amy Naples is the executive director for the 750 member business association serving nine communities on the South Shore. Amy had been leading the chamber for five years. Thank you, Amy, for joining us. Tell me a bit, please, about the chamber and your role. Hello, Senator. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so uh, as you said, um, our chamber it represents 750 businesses um, along the South Shore. We are a regional chamber. Um, we are certainly small but mighty. We have three full-time employees, including myself. Um, my role is quite complex. Um, because of having such a small team, we do a little bit of everything. And um, my team is just amazing. And I know you're familiar with them, Bob Millette, um, Meg Doherty, and we have a part-time controller, Alice and Costa. Um, so, you know, we put on roughly 90 events per year. Um, and that in addition to um, having a number of important key initiatives that aid in economic growth, workforce development, advocacy, and of course, tourism. So my job mainly is to develop goals and objectives that are unique to our business owners and uh, certainly our community. Um, and I manage our team in helping to attain those goals. Um, a large component of the chamber is of course, advocating on behalf of the business community, being that strong voice. Um, so I do take part part in local government, advocating for pro-business laws um, that benefit our local businesses, not harm them or impose additional increase in costs or restrict them from opportunities. Um, mainly, we try to be the steady hand, offer advice and guidance, be a consistent voice for the business community. Um, so, and of course, we, we play a very important role within the community. Um, you know, promoting and strengthening that um, through our healthy economy and strong business sector, which provides a great quality of life for our residents and then is very attractive to families and businesses to come here. You know, that's so well put. I mean, the symmetry between the business community, particularly small business, um, the fact that they employ a lot of local folks, and it, the um, investment and, that they put into the community and the way the, the residents and visitors really get that, you know, not only the, the balance, but those 
really uh, great uh, experiences as, as a family, as individuals, um, whether it's shopping, restaurants, and that's been something that's um, been so challenging during COVID. But you know, as a business lawyer in my background, I really have been impressed with, you know, the, the sustainability that the chamber has given businesses. And I, I guess I didn't realize, although I've attended many, that you putting on 90 events a year, anyone that has even put on one event um, <laughs> appreciates how, uh, how, how much effort uh, but you, that, that takes, but you make it fun. Um, you know, earlier this year, the joint committee that I chair on uh, consumer protection and professional licensure hosted a hearing in Plymouth to talk with small business owners and others about what's needed to make expanded outdoor dining permanent. And as, as you know, um, because you were there, we heard a lot about struggles of COVID-19 and how necessary it is to allow businesses the opportunity to get creative with their work. Um, I really was so grateful to have you and your team. Uh, can you tell me more about the work that you've been doing on outdoor dining in Plymouth and, and why you decided to participate as a chamber? Sure. On a, honestly, it was my honor for, to participate, something we are very passionate about, of course, supporting our local businesses um, and, and mainly the restaurants, knowing how hard um, the pandemic affected them. Um, so, so thankful to be there and hear from um, businesses, not even just on the South Shore and the Plymouth area, but also um, on the Cape as well. So um, the Chamber, of course, um, during the pandemic, just like every other business and every other organization shifted gears. Um, and it was mainly to keep businesses open, however we could support them. Um, we actually put together a Plymouth Recovery Task Force because there are we know there's strength in working together and we have so many wonderful organizations and people were doing all that they could. I thought it was important for us to be all working together. Um, and the Plymouth Recovery Task Force um, at the time, um, which was at the beginning of the pandemic, wanted to work on outdoor dining. We knew the governor had passed um, the order to allow this. We wanted to be able to provide this opportunity for businesses, um, especially in the downtown where they would be setting up on public property. So we we're a huge advocate um, just here locally in Plymouth um, and advocating for the town. We went before the Board of Selectmen, came up with a plan. We learned a lot, certainly from that first year of outdoor dining and um, we also were able to secure the funds or a donation from Lydell Brothers um, for all of the Jersey barriers that were located there which was about an $85,000 cost from Lydell. Um, they didn't own the barriers, they actually outsourced those so we were so appreciative of that um, to allow those restaurants to be able to and honestly what we hear every day is um, even still, that outdoor dining saved their businesses. Many of those restaurants, especially in the downtown, we do. Um, Plymouth is unique. We have a lot of opportunities elsewhere um, on pri on private um, property for some, um, but the downtown is thriving and hustling. And we have so many amazing restaurants, and they're smaller venues um, and smaller restaurants in general. So their seating um, with restrictions would be a couple of people allowed in a restaurant. So we knew that the outdoor dining would be vital. And something we did learn is that it made our downtowns so much more vibrant and was so attracting to visitors. So of course, we wanted to be part of that meeting, um, certainly voice that, um, you know, this is so important for recovery for our local businesses, particularly the restaurants. And I just want to thank you, Senator, for your support and leadership in this and continuing to advocate um, on that small business, on the small business's behalf. Um, we're so, so thankful. So yes, we've done an, an incredible amount of work. The town has been so supportive. And even this year, um, they've come up with a plan to even make it a little bit more beautiful. Each year we learn something. And I think people who are really going to enjoy this year's outdoor dining. Well, you know, Amy, I, I appreciate the, um, the work that we've been doing together and the fact that 
Uh, the chamber has been so collaborative and the, uh, along with the municipality. And it, as I look going forward, Plymouth in particular, I think um, is able to benefit because it's so walkable, really from, from the water um, all the way to, to town hall and, and surrounding areas. And the fact that because of its history, it attracts international visitors, but always um, I marvel at, at the way that you keep in mind the local community and that balance so that you know the, the tourism element is, is really more of a, an enhancement for local folks so that they feel comfortable uh, participating and supporting. Um, just uh, one last question, um, be, um, actually two things. One is, you know, what would you say is the most um, creative idea that had the best benefit? I, I know probably outdoor dining, but anything in terms of marketing? I know I've seen um, I've seen uh, endeavors where where your team just disappears into thin air and changes clothes, and <laughs> you know, just you take advantage of technology. I I guess and any kind of methods that you really have been having fun with, and then um, lastly, if you would just uh, maybe give some advice uh, to folks who are watching about how they can get more involved with the chamber if they have something that they care about. Sure, so um, we like to not take ourselves too seriously, really have fun and um, engage our members. So we do have a lot of fun through our social platforms. Um, but one, and one thing that we, well actually two, I think very beneficial opportunities that we um, started during the pandemic. Um, one of them prior to was our cash mobs, where we would meet up and support a business. And we asked that all uh, attendees spend between five and ten dollars at that local business. And um, the it's a surprise for both the business who were mobbing as well as the attendees. So we meet up in a parking lot um, and then we announce where we're going and then um, of course surprise that business. It's a great opportunity to showcase the business as well as ring the register. So that is one initiative that we love and um, certainly supports our local small businesses. Another one was keeping people engaged. Um, during the pandemic, we started net walking. We couldn't really get together all that often um, in the typical networking situation. So we decided to do some walking networking opportunities. So created net walking at certainly took off, was super successful. I think that's something we'll carry on forever. I think people love to get out of the office, enjoy a little exercise, network, and sometimes it's so nice to break away from your computer and um, be able to, you know, network and connect with people, especially in this day and age where we're on Zooms all day and we're, we're really kind of glued to the computer. Um, technology is an important part of of certainly doing business nowadays, whether it's remote, um, you know, meetings, seminars, whatever it may be. And we have certainly um, really gotten involved in that. And like you said, um, utilizing our, our technology and our social platforms and just Letting people know that we are um, we are fun, engaging chamber. Um, we are also very serious about business as well, and we're here to help and work for the business community as well as our residents. And just we live in such a beautiful part of the country, and our communities are outstanding, and our residents are so supportive. And we want that to be carried through through our messaging and our campaigns and marketing. You know, it, it reminds me because I, I attended one of the um, one of the beach uh, net walkings, which was great. And so, you know, as an organization, you are so welcoming to individuals. I mean, even if you're sort of maybe on the shy side or really um, kind of involved in your business, I will say personally, the chamber has such an open door and friendly feeling and reaches out in so many ways. They're genuinely welcoming. And it, it, it's sort of emblematic of the way they represent Plymouth and surrounding community as welcoming to, to visitors and, and folks who are here. So Amy, that's a tribute to you and your staff. I wanna thank you so much for being here um, on my In You Corner show. And you know, just uh, thanks for all you do every day. 
Thank you so much for your support. And anyone interested in learning more about the Chamber can visit our website, PlymouthChamber.com, and follow us on our social platforms on Facebook, um, Plymouth Area Chamber, as well as Instagram to stay up to date. But thank you, as always, and um, thank you for the opportunity to chat with you. Bye. I want to thank all of our guests for joining me for this episode. If you have questions or topics you'd like to have discussed, or if you just want to reach out to our office, you can call 617-722-1330 or email me at susan.moran at masenate.gov. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or my new website, senatorsumoran.com. Thank you all for watching today. I'm Senator Moran, and I'll be in your corner.